Join me this week as I go through some tips and tricks on how and where to hunt mule deer in the high coastal mountains of British Columbia. We'll cover everything from glassing tips, food sources, how we approach the hunt, where the high percentage zones are to locate mule deer, Okay guys, we're going to be starting up a new series. It's how to hunt the species of British Columbia. So uh, the first episode here we're going to talk about hunting mule deer. We'll talk about both the, the techniques, the terrain, uh, a little bit of the food supply, just to help get you started to understand particularly high elevation mule deer hunting, uh, which is one of my favorite types of hunts. I'm still learning quite a bit, uh, which is enjoyable. Uh, so if you've got some good tips that you want to pass on to the folks that are on this channel and to us to help us out, please leave a comment below. Uh, and if you have any particular show ideas that you want us to cover, hey, you know, that's we're trying to be a little more interactive with this. You know, we've been so focused on learning how to film and... Uh, it's it's been an extremely enjoyable challenge to say the least first things first uh, talk about uh, the necessity in the high country again this is specifically talking about high country or very open country hunting techniques for mule deer you really got to think about your glass I'm running the vortex razor UHD 12 by 50s these are absolutely fantastic not entirely necessary, but what is necessary is glassing off a tripod. Okay, sure, you know, I'm glassing as I'm walking and as I'm moving, and I usually scan the hill when I first get into the area by hand. And then when we set up in our ambush areas, we, you know, we like to be on tripods. Sometimes uh, a good hack is you can rest your binoculars on a trekking pole, you can adjust the height of your trekking pole, and you can stay pretty stable with that. There is still a sort of a constant movement to it, but it's a lot better. It, it is amazing what you're not seeing handheld, you know. And especially if you do go up to the 12 powers, I mean, they are at the upper limit of what's reasonable for hand-holding, in my opinion. You can do it, certainly for glassing a few hundred yards, no problem. Uh, but when you start stretching it out, for example, here it's it's probably 850 yards up to the top of that ridge line up there. That's starting to get in, into the realm where, you know, having it on a tripod and uh, good glass is going to matter. Um, the important thing about glassing is, you know, you have to be systematic. Now, your system might be to, uh, to glass left to right. That's mine, and I start closest to me and work my way uh, further away. Be surprised how many times you just start glassing and you know, you're really, your eyes are taking in everything that's a thousand yards away, the entire vista, and there's actually a deer or deer that are 250 yards away, you know? So, uh, but you can go up, down, left, right, however you want, but the, the whole premise is you want to run a grid on the the ground you're glassing so and, and when I say run a grid I don't mean that you're in constant movement with your glass what you do is you um, so for example in this area I'd just be glassing in I'd have a look I'd mark something on the right side of my glass I keep that on the left edge of my glass now. I use my eyes to look all around the glass, making sure I'm in tack sharp focus. Have a look. Move again. And ideally you want to really minimize even the amount you're touching your glass. That's why I don't use the eye cups. It takes a little practice to get used to, but I just rest my, barely rest my brow on the upper edge of these. If it's super sunny 
and you're glassing into it, then yeah, maybe you want to spin the eye cups out and use them. Uh, I don't. I typically just plan where I'm going to glass from. Typically in the morning you want a position where you're on the east side of a basin looking west because as the sun comes up it's going to light that whole basin up and uh, it'll give you the best advantage, less eye fatigue, higher contrast to be able to pick the game out. You know when you're looking for ears, antlers, ear flicks are really good uh, for picking up deer particularly uh, like you can see here, well maybe you can't see but there's a ton of mosquitoes around me here right now. You know, they're around the deer as well. Their ears are flicking constantly. Uh, it's amazing how easily you can pick up the ear flick. Almost more than a, a deer standing, an ear flick is, is going to be more apparent. That movement really catches your eye. So you glass slow and methodically and you'll have a little more success with that. So uh, with that being said, what we want to focus on when we are picking apart this country is, you know, you're looking in the marble pockets are really important. You know, right now we've got the sun over here to the east. It's casting shadows on the west sides of the trees. We've got a drainage that goes up through the middle. So you really want to hit the high potential ground sooner rather than later. So you, you just really want to focus, key in on that as your grid search. You really go slow when you get into those high potential areas but still systematic is the best. When you first come in, you can take a quick blast with your hands and glass the high potential spot offhand. You know, the sooner you sit in, relax, get set up on your glass, uh, the better you're gonna be. So yeah, those are high potential areas, drainages. Uh, they green up the quickest and typically train the animals. They'll get their beds close to there or they get into a routine of coming back and forth even as uh, more food supply becomes available in a broader area up here. So as you can see, these slopes are beautifully green and marbled. And, you know, typically right now it's a little late in the morning uh, to be catching them out in the open. You still might catch them in the shadowy areas here, but, uh, but typically, you know, the deer have gone back into these tree sections right now embedded down. Another area that it's really important to pay particular attention to is uh, there's some cliffs up here. The big bucks especially, they love to go in and make a bed uh, right in under those cliffs. So those are very, very important area to pay some close attention to as you're uh, scanning the hill with your glass. So uh, we'll show you some food. We'll give you a look at the, some of these slopes and some of the things to look for. So when you're thinking about aspect, uh, I'm looking north here with the camera. Uh, if you look, so it's morning right now, if you try and glass back to the east, you, you can see the haze even in the camera. It's, it's the same haze that you're going to fight with your glass and it really is detrimental to uh, spotting game. So plan out where you're going to glass from so you can uh, take advantage of having the sun either at your back or, you know, working in your favor to give you that contrast to help you pick subtleties out of these hills, which leads to uh, success. This is the favorite food for mountain mule deer. These guys with the little white flowers on them, you'll see these will all be nubbed off right above the first group of leaves. And as you can see, they are plentiful on this slope. So that is what you're gonna be looking for in mule deer country. So yeah, look for those for success. So in the fall when they really key in on them, there's actually no flowers left on them. So flowered out at that point. Uh, that's about it for, for the opener here.